Thank you. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Can you introduce something about yourself? Sure, I'm Angie. Most people in Saigon know me as Angie the Diva. Mm -hmm. oh. You can see that. I'm a comedian here, and I'm an entertainment correspondent for I Am HTMC. I have no idea what that is. It is uh, like your catch-all for all things in Saigon. So if you want to know where to go out, if you want to know where to have fun, if you want to know where to get your motorbike serviced, Anything, you can find it, hashtag IMHCMC. Okay, that's cool. I think you will like it because you like to have fun. You don't like to have fun? Who doesn't like to have fun? <laughs> yeah, well, um, I think uh, I know quite a little bit about Saigon, but I never know where to go out, so I'll be looking into that. Come find me. Okay, so uh, the story today, what's happening? Can you tell us uh, a little bit about your background? I am from Hawaii, United Hawaii. States. Yes. Oh. Aloha. <laughs> I lived there most of my adult life. I wasn't born there, but that is where home is. And I've been in Saigon for about two and a half years. Um, I started my comedy career here. And everything that I do, I love to say I am not an English teacher. Oh, I was saying that like a, a little while ago. Um, I hated how, how people look down upon an English teacher. Like, I know it's not really the game. Like, I don't want to be an English teacher, but I am an English teacher. There's nothing wrong with being an English teacher. <sighs> oh, um, why you choose Saigon to start your job? I needed money. <laughs> um, I was traveling around Asia for a while with my kids, mm. and we just ran out of money. And I had a friend that I met in Cambodia, a VHQ woman, and she said, you can come to Vietnam. It's really easy to live here. It's easy to make money. You can be an English teacher. It'll mm -hmm. be quick and fun. And so I came, um, I lived in Vung Tao for five months, mm -hmm. and I hated it. Mm. <laughs> I'm not really a fan of the beach uh, either. It was really just slow. It reminded me so much of home mm. and what I tried to get away from. So um, I had an opportunity to come to Saigon, and everyone was like, you're gonna hate it. It's busy, it's chaotic, it's crazy, it's dirty. And I got here and I was like, <sighs> Saigon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I've been here ever since. Uh -huh. It's been absolutely great. Um, I love Saigon and Saigon loves me. Mm -hmm. And may I ask you about your gender? I am biological female. Mm -hmm. um, and I say that I'm female most mm -hmm. of the time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you have people asking you, like, are you female? Like, well, I hang out really. with a lot of drag queens, oh. um, but these pretty much let people know Yeah, she's a girl. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> but um, I have the information that you are like, pansexual. I have no idea about that. Um, a lot of my life, I identified as bisexual because it's just easier for people to digest. The problem that I have with that definition is that it excludes non-binary individuals. So trans people, um, people who are drag queens, people, drag kings, people on the spectrum of sexuality and gender. I just love people, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everybody. Non-binary, um, I don't know what non-binary is. Non-binary means they don't transcribe to either male or female. Oh, so they just like a uh, human? Person. Human. A human. I think it's extremely attractive. To be honest, I prefer a man that like is a little bit more feminine, or I prefer a girl that has a little bit more of a boyish look to her. So the in-between is um, for me very interesting, but hard for me to talk to because um, I feel a little bit scared to offend somebody. But um, I think it's not that hard for me because I know that a lot of people, when they look at me, mm. it's hard for them to talk to me. Mm. Oh. Just because I look different mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and I have a bit of confidence about me. I have a lot of confidence about mm -hmm. me. I have a huge personality. Yes. So I felt it when you came in. Yes. <laughs> 
so I don't have a problem talking to other people. And I find that when you try to connect with someone on just a human level, not trying to figure out what are you, mm, 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 mm. Um, then they're comfortable and they, they talk to me. Mm. That's fine. And if I'm lucky, we get laid. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Oh, since when you realize that you have special feeling with all kind of genders? I think early on, um, when I was a teenager, I think I identified my first like sexual feelings were towards women. At first, I was like, okay, I'm lesbian. Um, mm -hmm. And then I had a friend who I grew up with for a long time, and we got involved, and so I was like, okay, well, I, I guess I'm bisexual then. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. But as I grew older and as I met more people, I just realized you don't have to put a label on everything. Identify as pansexual just so that people can put a name to it. Mm -hmm. But I'm just Angie. I don't feel the need to label myself or anyone else. Um, if you personally have pronouns or a way that you would want to be identified as, I can respect that but I don't need to do that. Mm. Basically, uh, Angie is somebody that just loves somebody for who they are. Doesn't matter yeah. if they're woman or man or whatever. Yeah. It's just who you are. Would you please share uh, with us about your childhood? Oh. <laughs> we can I was born in Pennsylvania and we moved to Georgia when I was about four. And I grew up there until I was in university. And I traveled back and forth from Georgia to Hawaii during my university years. One time I came back, I got pregnant, and I moved mm -hmm. to Hawaii permanently. So my kids were born there. I have two kids. Mm -hmm. They were both born there and raised in Hawaii. My childhood specifically, I was raised by a single mom. Um, it was really good. She did her absolute best mm. to provide for us, and she gave us really amazing opportunities. We grew up super religious. Oh, oh. Same, 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 same. <laughs> same. I've been told my whole life growing up that being gay was wrong and it's sin among many other things that were just wrong. All the fun shit. Mm -hmm. um, you oh, couldn't yeah. Do <laughs> Can't do fun shit. That is uh, no. illegal. <laughs> yes. And then when I got to university and I, got, and I didn't have to go to church anymore, I started to see people for who they were. And I went to university in the gay district. So I was surrounded by gay people, lesbians, trans, mm -hmm. drag queens, everybody, this fabulous community. Heaven. Heaven. Mm -hmm. And these people took care of me. They looked after me and they paid their bills and they went to work and they raised their kids mm -hmm. and they did regular, normal day to day things. And I started to think maybe my upbringing didn't completely mesh with who I was now. Mm -hmm. And um, I heard something about your family. Is there any, um, uh, how do I say, uh, queer? queerness in your family? Yes. My closest brother, he's actually my cousin, but we grew mm -hmm. up together. He is gay. Mm -hmm. um, he mm -hmm. came out a few years ago. Is that difficult? It was very difficult for him. Um, he thought that our family wouldn't accept him if he came out. I didn't like have it coming out. I just was like, this is who I am. And I just lived my life. And everybody knew that. Um, so when he was having such a crisis moment for himself, it, mm. it, it felt a little bit like he didn't trust us. Mm. Um, but also, it just brought us closer because he knew that we were still there for him no matter what. So my cousin is gay. Um, there are other queer people in my family. Um, Mm -hmm. a, a lot of times in Asia, <laughs> mm -hmm. people want to come and take my picture and they want to come and touch mm -hmm. my hair mm -hmm. because they don't have <laughs> any real idea of what I am. It's almost mm. like I'm an alien sometimes. And a lot of people would see that as racism. Mm -hmm. I see it as curiosity. You just don't have any experience with it. And mm -hmm. I like to show people a positive representation of black people mm -hmm. and I want them to have a positive you know feeling after they leave me and hopefully they'll be 
more able and more willing to talk to other people who look like me later. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We all have problems, mm. we all have happiness and joys, and if we can just kind of meet in the middle somewhere, mm. maybe the world will go be, away. The world will be a better place, right? So um, you said that you have two children. I have a girl, she's 11, and a boy who is nine, Jade and Jack, and they're fantastic little people. My daughter is more of an introvert, and my son is very much like me. Oh, girl. <laughs> we call him Mr. Aloha because uh -huh. he will say hello to anyone. Uh -huh. Everyone is his best friend. Uh, how okay, cute. that's very cute. Yes. You told about being a single mom. You chose it or something did happen? I don't think anybody chooses to be a single mom. <laughs> if you can have two parents in one household, mm. that is the way to go. I got divorced after almost 10 years. We were together. For whatever reason, I'm not really sure. He just needed to kind of check out for a little while. So yeah, I was a single parent for five full years. The first few years were really difficult. Um, Hawaii is super expensive. I was working like three jobs and 60 plus hours a week. So I started to look for something else. Mm -hmm. And um, I think as a single parent, you have two options. You can give up your whole life for your kids and be miserable. You love them with everything, but you cannot lose yourself as a person. And just because I'm a mom does not mean that I'm not a woman, doesn't mean that I'm not a person, it doesn't mean that I'm not sexual, mm -hmm. that I don't have needs and wants Dreams. and goals. Yes, absolutely. So um, for me, it was really important to not continue that negative thoughts mm. about that, about being a single Boxing, parent. Boxing, caging yourself. Yeah. At some point, I had to say, it didn't happen to me, now I choose it. Mm -hmm. Now I choose to live my life the best way that I can and give my kids the best opportunities that I can. And in that, when you are happy yourself, you are a better mother too. Absolutely. I am a single parent still, um, but my kids have gone back to be with mm. their dad and my, mm. and my mom. So they split time between all of us. That's also a discrimination because yeah. like people feel like because you're a woman, you should always be with the children and yeah. you should take care of the children and you yeah. should be responsible. But what about the man? He's got responsibilities too, you know? He took some time off, um, but now he is being there for them and he's providing mm. for them and they're getting to rebuild that relationship with him, which I feel is really, really important. Very. I had time with them for five years, every day, 24 seven, and we got to do whatever we wanted to. And now it's their turn to be with him, and, and we have a, a good working relationship, so. I have contact with my kids, I talk to them almost every day, um, I'm still there for them, I go mm -hmm. and see them, but it's better for them right now to be at home, surrounded by family, and having that big support system. Your kids are like ever curious about your gender? I wouldn't say curious. I remember one time my son and I were in a car, and that song um, from Macklemore came on the radio, Same Love. The song is talking about um, same-sex marriage, and I had always had my children around people in the queer community. And we were sitting in the car and he said, Mom, what is gay? And I was like, oh. Getting goosebumps. So I said, well, you know how mom and dad love each other and we're together? Well, you know how uncle loves his boyfriend and they're together? Well, that's gay because they're both boys. Mm -hmm. And I think he was like three. Mm -hmm. He thought for a second and he was like, OK, so everybody loves everybody. <laughs> Perfect. 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 And it just, it just showed me that children don't learn by what we say. Mm -hmm. They learn by what we do and what we see. So Angie, why do you want to become a comedian? I love to laugh. Mm. <laughs> Who doesn't, right? I didn't know I wanted to be a comedian at all. I'd always had kind of a big personality and my family is just generally funny. I think this is a huge generalization, but black people tend to be very funny. Mm. 
so it just came kind of naturally to me. My friends were always like, oh, you're really funny. And then when I came to Saigon, I was here for maybe like a month, and I went to a comedy show. Where do you go to those things? Because I didn't even know there's a oh comedy scene here. Mm. So I run Saigon Funny People. We run an open mic every Monday at Indica, mm -hmm. Saigon. We have one show a month at Bon Bar, and we have one show a month at Nick Knack. There's also a ton of o other open mics around the city. Comedy Saigon runs a few of them, and there's some other comedians who run them as well. There's some in D7. There Whoa, are some there's in D3. a lot, hey? They're all over the place. I went to a comedy show, and I was a little bit drunk. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I was just bantering with the host, and for whatever reason, no one else in the audience was talking to him. And I, he, I thought he was hilarious, so mm -hmm. I was, you know, talking back and forth to him. And then somebody came up to me after the show, and they were like, hey, do you want to do stand-up comedy? I was like, I mean, I guess, uh, sure, okay, I don't know. Try. Maybe. Bye. I did my first show, mm -hmm. and I loved it. I can just imagine. I just, I lived for it. And I did really well. Um, the audience loved it. Um, and they asked me to come back the next day. And the next day was an international headliner. Good. I got paid. I was just like, I didn't know we could make money at this. Mm -hmm. um, and I was hooked. Mm -hmm. I was hooked. Mm -hmm. And it's the first thing that I've ever done in my life where I feel like it's absolutely what I should be doing. I'm super lucky. I think a lot of people never get there. And I have had a billion different jobs uh -huh. <laughs> trying to figure out what makes me happy, what will get me up in the morning, what keeps me going. Um, and comedy is it. Like, I love it. I love the stage. I love the limelight. I love that, like, belly laugh that people get. Mm. Um, I love when I go somewhere and somebody's like, oh, I saw you on stage. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love it. I love it. So what do you think about LGBT community in uh, Saigon? This is the most diverse LGBT community I have ever been a part of. When I was in Atlanta, it was v in Georgia, it was very segregated. Gay men partied here, drag queens partied here, lesbians were here, transgender people were here, mm. transgender white people, white lesbians, black mm. lesbians, like oh, it yeah, was very, very, very segregated. Yeah. Okay. Um, and when I was in Hawaii, it was a bit more mixed, but still kind of segregated um, a bit. And then when I came here, they yeah. are amazing. Uh, the community here is so welcoming and so inclusive. Everyone is welcome, whether you are gay or queer or not. Even if you just like to be fabulous and you want to dress up on a Friday evening and you don't want people to look at you weird. Would you please <laughs> share with us your love story? Oh. <laughs> please include uh, any spicy I mean, details. Okay. Let's get specific. I'm a whore. So. <laughs> Saigon is a city of whores. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Tinder is on and popping. Bubble I is had buzzing. It. Grinder is everything. Do you, what Don't is Grinder? Do you know what Grinder is? Gay dating app. Yes. I have lots of gay men friends and I help them swipe and it is so fun. Mm. The boys. Mm. <sighs> okay. All the packs. All of the deliciousness. But if you live in District 2, mm. this is where you can be free to mm. be yourself with mm. your legs wide open. Mm. It's fun. Don't have to care. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting experience. Maybe the first time I had sex with a transgender person. Ooh. Ooh. I didn't know that he was transgender. Mm -hmm. um, and I was with a very good friend of mine, best friend. Mm -mm -mm. But we were really fucked up one night. We go to a gender funk party. Okay, that's where it all happened. <laughs> I saw this girl in the party, or I thought she was a girl, and I saw her and I was like, hey girl, how you doing? And she was like, <laughs> no, I'm serious. <laughs> and so I left her and I walked around and I did my thing. Mm. And then I saw her later on and I was like, I yeah. meant it. I really meant happening. It. Let's go. And so we went outside and we were talking and talking with my friend. Talking. And mm -hmm. I went to go get some drinks. I left her with my friend and I come back and they are making out in the grass. <laughs> what the hell? I'm like, dude, what the f That was mine. Yeah. Outdoor. Yes. On the grass. Oh. Is it illegal? <laughs> so we were just chatting up again and then we all started making mm. out. 
Ooh. And, and then he was like, uh, so like, what's happening? I was like, dude, this is a threesome. Get the bike, let's go. Yes. Yeah. So, so we went back to his house and we did the do. Oh. And it was fun. I have no complaints. Actually, I am kind of traditional boy, so. <laughs> mm -mm. Little bit shy. How about your love? I am pansexual, so it's very important to me to have my freedom. It doesn't mean that I want to sleep with everyone. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that I always have threesomes. Yeah. But it does mean that I want the freedom to choose. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to have to be with one person. I also don't want that other person to feel locked into a situation mm. either. I mean, there are seven and a half billion people on this planet. Mm -hmm. I think it's really pretentious to think that I am gonna be everything for one other mm -hmm. person. It's fun. Um, as long as you're safe mm -hmm. to experience that with, in my opinion, as many people as possible. I like to taste the rainbow. I have two children. Mm -hmm. I love them both. Mm -hmm. I have more than one best friend. I love them both. Mm -hmm. I can love more than one person. I have enough space in my heart to love more than one person. That is not an idea that is common. Mm -hmm. So finding a love match mm -hmm. um, who is also a romantic partner is a bit more difficult. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is difficult. And I think your ideas of what love is and mm -hmm. how you like to be loved and how you show love, it evolves over time. Mm -hmm. you, it evolves with your different experiences and your traumas and your triumphs. So to lock yourself into one situation mm. for the rest of your life. I think, I mean, I know from my personal experience, After 10 it years, ends in it, divorce. Yeah, <laughs> it ends in divorce. Can you share the plans on the near future? I would love to use my platform to help other families of color uh, get out of the United States mm. and experience travel and see the world. Do you have uh, one um, famous comedian or somebody that you would love to meet? I would love to meet Beyonce. I mean, we best friends, but she be hella busy, you know? <laughs> she got a lot of things going on. Me and her kids, we gr they grow up together, you know? Call me, girl. I know you're busy, but let's have tea sometimes. Um, I really want to sit on Oprah's sofa. <laughs> she got a house on Maui, and I've seen it from a distance. I know where the sofa is, and I feel like she don't be sitting on it a lot. So she could invite me out, and we can have coffee or something. I mean, I want to go frolic in the garden, Oprah. Okay? <laughs> Just invite me over, girl. I'll be there, OK? Um, Tiffany Haddish, girl, I love you, and I tried that grapefruit thing. It works. <laughs> yes, for that information. The grapefruit thing. Do you have any message for, like, LGBT community? It can be really difficult to live your truth, mm. but I promise if you just do it, if you get over the fear and you live your life fully, you will be happier and you will find your tribe. Mm -hmm. Mentality, when your mentality is happy, it creates your environment and your environment becomes happy. Yes, it's worth it. Well, uh, thanks for coming and thanks for sharing your lovely story with us. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me.